Bye, guys. Hi guys, this is M Seeker of Truth, and I'm here today with Glenn, Charlie Ward's son, and also Darren or Truth Intelligencer. Hello, guys. Hello. Hey. How you doing? Hey. Oh, I'm very, very well, thank you. Um, so, just firstly, from myself and everyone, um, I just want to thank you guys, especially you, Glenn, for um, doing the previous uh, interview. Um, it's gone a lot of attention, and I think it has helped um, quite a lot of people. So, um, thank you, thank you very much. Just to quickly clear something up before we start, um, you know, some people have been saying, oh, now, now, um, you're, you're seeking out and trying to get in contact with Charlie Ward's family, et cetera. Um, just to be clear on this, Glenn, this is the first time we've ever spoken, right? This is actually the first time we've ever spoken. Yeah. And I've made contact with you guys more than you've made contact with me. So, yeah. Um, Thank you. Um, yeah, so obviously um, Darren had been has arranged this between us. Um, so thank you, Darren. And um, yeah, like I say, this is the first time I've actually spoken to Glenn. Even uh, in, in messaging, uh, Darren has been kind of the go-between. So um, you know, how did you guys? How did you guys meet uh, first? I know you've been speaking for quite a while. Was that right? Yeah, do you want me to? I I basically got a message from my sister um, regarding um, some tweets on her football posts and stuff from various people um and then a voice message that I, I think we played on the last video from my dad um said just basically saying that he, he she should back him not anything else so i contacted i think i think it sent every single one of you that i could an inbox and or I, or I commented on one of your tweets and darren contacted me first back and i spoke to darren at length and and now I just said to Darren, because a lot of people have made contact through either Facebook or Twitter or one way or another. I've just said, just go through Darren. So we just keep it as one as opposed to everybody coming in left, right and centre, because it will just get a bit, bit, bit silly. Well, yeah. And overwhelming, I'm sure. Um, yeah. It's been, it can be, yeah. It's been good because we've been able to like, chat a, a lot away from the internet and the interviews. And we've, we've spoke about First of all, I think Charlie and just ourselves in general. So it's been good being able to stay like that kind of focus. You know yeah. what? The the interview between you two was very nat so natural. Mm. Uh, it was obviously you know just two blokes having a you know having a chat about it. You know, um, and I didn't realise it was actually an interview. I thought we were just having a chat. I mean, mm. that, that's great because it's raw. You know, it's um, it's true. It's, you know, you're not behind lights, camera, action. You're just having a chat. Yeah. And, and I think that, that, that how natural that was came across really well. Um, so a few people have said because of that and because of some of the edits um, that were in the video, and that was really um, to, to sort of protect other people. Um, yeah. On but, my request. Uh, on your on your request. Yeah. Uh, but kind of due to that and due to kind of how natural the conversation was flowing, it was kind of a bit... Um, you were talking about one thing and you talk about another thing and it was uh, slightly unstructured so i'm hoping with this interview um we can add some kind of structure to um to getting to the bottom of the truth uh, and, and getting the story out um so that that's what i'm hoping from from this interview so i i've tried to um lay out this interview um in in a way that kind of makes sense chronologically yeah um so yeah so th th i mean it was a brilliant interview again thank you very much both of you um, but let's see um what we can do with this one and um yeah i, I think that we could we could really nail a, a succinct interview okay. um so glenn let's start off with um sort of the early years um i mean what do you what do you kind of first remember um you know about your father you know is uh, talk to me through uh, we'll go on to talk about the plymouth brethren in a minute but um i really what, remember the brethren when i was a kid um yeah yeah i, I don't remember that as a child because i think i left when i was about three or four years old so oh, okay you I, I can tell you when I went back when I was about 20, I went back for three or four months and I, I spoke to a few people, but it's very, it's not from the early years though, yeah. Sure. So um, I've, got a, I've got a little video actually. Um, let's, let's have a look at it. This is, this is what um, Charlie says uh, about the Plymouth Brethren. Charlie grew up being a part of the religious cult Plymouth Brethren. This was the same cult that Alistair Crowley was a part of. Go back to your 
humble beginnings and uh, the cult that you say you came from, the uh, Plymouth Brethren. Um, yes, I come from a Christian background. The Plymouth Brethren, in a nutshell, is similar to Baptist teaching. Um, very similar, but they've added and taken away things I didn't like. But from a point of view of Jesus loves you, I think that's a good thing to teach people. And But if everyone else thinks you're a twat, then so be it. Or everyone else thinks I'm a twat, so be it. doesn't matter. Um, what people think of me has never bothered me. As you came yeah. out of the cult, obviously you say you were brainwashed, quote unquote. Um... Well, that, that's one point that the British don't like you using. They call it indoctrination, which is exactly the same thing. So you're indoctrinated. Yeah. Um, what religious uh, viewpoint did you take after you came out of out of the cult, um, biblically Did, speaking? I didn't believe in anything, mate. I didn't believe in anything. I, I went the opposite way. Right. So obviously, that was uh, Charlie talking to Justice, um, someone I've done a few videos with. Uh, yeah. I've seen around it um and, and so obviously you were one of three uh you know three siblings right so you had a brother and a sister and um obviously your mother and and obviously charlie in this uh plymouth brethren what what um so you said you don't really remember much no i don't right? remember anything like that i do know the brethren and i don't know how they operate what makes me laugh the most about this is my dad has had nothing to do with religion since he left there. I mean, this whole thing, God loves you, um, what he says, or whatever he says. Jesus loves you. Um, Jesus loves yeah. you. He's an absolute insult. Like, I, he's never, he's he's been full-blown, never had to, to any shit. He's using it because it's a nice thing. It's like, you know, everyone trusts him. He, oh, Jesus loves you. Mm. I, I just, he I even just, says at the end of the clip that why, um, why? justice what? asks him what what religious viewpoint did you have after you left and he said nothing i went the other way so yeah he did he's saying he went the other way he got tattoos uh he's got a tattoo on his arm i think he's had it removed now he, he did loads of different stuff that completely rebellious and it just find i find it just i find it all really cringy and i was saying to someone the other day when i was talking to him about this I think he's almost trying to start his own cult now. Mm -hmm. I think he thinks he's like a way. top leader or something. Um, it's kind of scary as well. Like the more I'm, I don't watch anything to do with him, I can't watch anything to do with it. It just makes me um, repulsed. But you obviously you see it. I did watch a little clip here and there, but it's like seriously, man, the stuff that comes out of his mouth. I've never heard anything quite like it, and I'm, I'm shocked that people are buying into this. It, it's crazy, I, isn't it? It's an easy thing for me to say. Yeah. He does get a lot of laugh. It seems to be more mainly women as well, what he gets following him, doesn't it? Middle-aged kind of women more than... Following him. Mean, yeah. yeah. It's kind of, a, it's kind of weird, though, it, it, his fan base. 40 plus, um, yeah. and, and mainly female. Um, although, you know, there's, there's males, there's younger people um, from all over. But, yeah, I'd say that's probably um his main fan base but then again probably most people that watch my channel are also the same bracket um <laughs> so am i sitting uh, am i talking about some sex icon with another one <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say that but yeah i've got a, you know I, I looked at my youtube stats and, and i think it's because of the, of what i do so um you know people believing in these sort of things tend to be um you know sort of the the older end of the spectrum um and slightly more so female so with what i do as well um, i seem to attract the same sort of following which is good because they're the people it's, that yeah. it's I the want kind to of talk. demographic that would watch i don't want to sound bad it's what kind of watch this kind of stuff you know pet you know single parent or parents at home or wives at home that are kind of watching this kind of stuff i suppose i don't want to sound rude to you anybody um but yeah other people are going through emails and linkedin and stuff i suppose i think for me regardless of whatever the demographic is whoever it's um whoever it is uh, affecting you know that they're the people that i want to speak to so yeah so as long as I'm reaching his demographic and a demographic of people like the fake king and all these other people that are taking money off vulnerable people, as long as I'm reaching the same de demographic, then I'm happy man. Um, because it's, it's yeah. why I do what I do. Yeah. So, um, 
Speaking of which, um, something I've got to ask you before. So what, what kind of a, are your intentions, if you don't ask me, mind me asking, by doing these interviews? I think you kind of said it before, but, you know, is it similar to me that you're worrying about all these people? I mean, what? Um, it's, it's becoming alarming more and more as I talk and as Darren shares information with me, sends some screenshots of what people are saying, what they've done and what what I've opened their eyes up to, et cetera, et cetera. So that has become more. Uh, my intentions to start with were to basically, I, I I get a lot, as I mentioned in the last video, I get a lot of messages coming through my Facebook, Instagram and stuff. And they're like, oh, you know, your dad, this and this and this, QAnon, on this and this and this and this. And I just can't, don't give two shits. And I, and I you know, obviously other members of my family are getting this as well. And they don't need it because they've got nothing to do with them. Um, we have nothing to do with him. So um, am I, and he's done a lot to me over the past 20 years where it's not so much, no, it's not revenge at all. It's just, I want to sh just now tell him just to you know, shut up because you're talking absolute nonsense. And he's done that all the time. But as, his, as when he was your father, you kind of have to accept it as that. And you don't mm. just take it as it. And now I just want to be like, okay, enough's enough. And a, no, a number of his friends are kind of seeing this, especially as he's gone, you know, AWOL on this uh, YouTube and stuff. He's just gone crazy. Well, is there, um, there must be an element of, you know, you guys knew, you know, you, you, you knew Charlie, right? And you know, it's just Charlie, uh, as even as he would say, <laughs> I'm not the Messiah, yeah. I'm just Charlie. <laughs> Whoever said you were the Messiah, Charlie? No. But, um, you know, it was affecting your family and, and his friends, uh, but now it's gone further afield and is an effect is affecting he a lot of to people be challenged he hates to be challenged mm. uh, i was speaking to one of his friends the other day and uh, who challenged him and he's blocked him from everything it's like he doesn't you know he's got no backing yeah he can talk with confidence um and he can talk a very good story without anybody debating him but as soon as someone debates him on an intellectual level the guy crumbles and he goes fierce at people Press and all that kind of crap. Yeah, um, he just that. can't handle it. He can't handle it. He's not. He's not. Not. He's got no backbone to this. This whole facade, basically. I don't think. So, um, moving back to Plymouth Brethren, um, just to clear this up, how did Charlie end up leaving the Plymouth Brethren? What is the actual story behind that? Right. Okay. There's two stories. One from my mum, and one from my dad. Okay, now, let's hear them both. Is a, a very honest woman, and she always has been, and she always will be. Um, she has no reason to lie. Uh, now, my dad said he was fixing a um, cooker in an Indian restaurant, and after we finished cook, uh, fixing the, um, the cooker, he had food with them, and some other brethren walked past and caught him because you're not allowed to eat or drink or anything associate yourselves with the outside world. And he got uh -huh. thrown up for that. Right. Or my mum's um, one was he was got caught adultery, basically. So he was a cheat. Um, he cheated on my mum, got caught and then left. Um, so I. So is this. So you say he left. Was that, that up, is she? You know, she ain't going to start making a story. Oh, he cheated on me. Why would no. she do that? It's, not, it's quite embarrassing, really. I wouldn't want to say that. It would keep it under wraps. But she told us the truth. So. Is the, the story of an Indian restaurant is a bit, bit Charlie Ward, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit Charlie Ward, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, oh, so yeah, just to just clarify, what you say he was uh, adultery. So he was sleeping. So he's a married man sleeping with other uh, other women. Um, yeah. Two questions I've got for that. One was it was it wives of those in the Plymouth Brethren, and two I, did he leave? I, would, I would not go into that kind of thing with my yeah. mum. Uh, okay, so did he, did he leave yeah, or was it going into the nitty gritty? Sorry. Eva, was he kicked out? Oh, he was then kicked out. Um, yeah. And then obviously my mum was in with us three children, okay? Um, my dad, uh, apparently, he he then started making, uh, you know, wanting my mum to come out. He started saying, that, you know, I'm going to tell them that we slept together, which means she'll get kicked out. It's kind of a blackmail situation. She got, she came out eventually with us. Um, then um, she, my mum does say that's the best thing she, he's ever done for her is getting her out of that religion because uh, it is a tough place to be inside there. Um, and then, uh, you know, 
he then went on to losing the house that uh, my mum's parents bought um, for them uh, in a business deal. Um, yeah, it just it, it just just a, a roller coaster of events to, to divorce, really. Um, business going wrong, dad going out playing snooker, getting drunk, all that kind of stuff. Usual Charlie Charlie boy tactics kind of thing. So, um, so I'm guessing that would have been mid mid eighties, perhaps when 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 he left. I was born eighty one, so we're talking mid eighties, late eighties, yeah. So when he's talking, so, so he, he, the next thing he's he's talking about, and I'll, I'll show you a short clip. Um, he talks about uh, working for Sensomatic, and I know that you mentioned this in yeah. your last interview. Uh, and during this time, he was selling. He was a CCTV salesman, you know. Yeah. Um, and he knocked on the door of a prison, and then somehow got um, got given. Uh, access and then was in charge of CCTV and um, the security of all prisons in the UK. So uh, let's have a look at that. Charlie states that at one time he was the head of security in all prisons in the UK. Now, if Charlie is telling the truth about this, this is an extremely high profile job for a timeshare salesman. Just how did he manage to get this job? Providing advice and systems for the security of prisons in three countries. That was 25 years ago. Um, for three years, I was doing this, the, the access control and, and closed circuit television for all the prisons in the UK for a company called Sensomatic. 147 prisons, because that's the maximum break in snooker. That's why I remember there was 147 prisons okay. in those days. And I visited every single one of them. I was given the worst street in Bristol to knock. Uh, the doors on, which was all, all sort of Pakistani shops going up Gloucester Road that wouldn't spend a penny on anything. And I just knocked one door on Gloucester Road that nobody's ever knocked before, which was the prison. And Bob Dixon was the governor, um, who I remained friends with for many, many years. And we started off by doing his visits, which was an area of concern because there was a lot of contraband coming in and into the prison. They wanted to stop it. And from there, we, uh, the next prison I did was Exeter, which was Toby Newth, the governor. And became good friends with him because they they gave me an insight that the two of them gave me an insight to the whole prison service sure as to what was going on and where their weaknesses were um and it it went from there and it was it's very much you know because it's it's almost like a brotherhood the, the prison officers association and they talk to each other and say oh you want to have a word with charlie he can sort out this problem and this problem and it just grew and grew and right so um yeah the story sounds mad and i know that um you know you, you believe or you know that there's some truth behind the whole sensomatic thing there is some element of truth because i know the owner of sensomatic as well because i've met him because but that did do well for the company there's no you know two ways about it he did get the contracts for the prisons did he design the thing uh, you know you know if you went into a shop you know a corner shop you know, news agents, whatever, you would say, right, you want a camera there on the door, you want a camera there on the exit, da, da, da. you know, you can you can sort of quote that kind of stuff. But to design it for a prison, a high security, you know, where you've got all kinds of people uh, behind them bars, you know, no chance you're, you're going to be responsible for that. You get, um, get a design team, a real team of security to get that excellent. sorted. Mm. Charlie Ward. Sorry, but no. <laughs> Why would so, you do that? Darren, did you want to say something here? Sorry. But I was just agreeing with him. I was just. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah this oh, is you think you're going to design 147 prisons when all you do is know how to sell cameras? You can't mm -hmm. be the head of security just because you're good at sales. You can't. This is the thing. Char I mean, Charlie's a salesman, and we know this. Uh, you know, he spent time in timeshares, which we'll touch on in a minute. Um, he spent, well, he says most of his life, he, sp he says he spent on that. Um, he's clearly selling himself and his secret intel now, um, you know, and he's doing very well off of that. And, you know, he he, he was a top CCTV he's salesman for Centre Matter. Secret intel. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that um, oh, going, going forward. But so... My so there must be some truth in that, you know. He he worked for the uh, as a CCTV salesman. He did very well for them. He is a good salesman. We, we all know from watching his really? videos. But um, to be in charge of the security of all prisons in the UK and his story is he knocked on the door 
And the governor went, all right, here's all of our security concerns, as as the governor of prisons do. Oh, you're a, you're a, you're a uh, you know, door to door salesman. Come in. Let me show you where all our problems yeah. are. And yeah. then and then then go, oh, you know, we're a brotherhood. That word, um, you know, and, and it reminded me of. So I'm it guessing this. He went into this job after he left Plymouth Brethren, I'm guessing, around that time. No, you said 25 years. I was just looking at that then. I'm, I'm 39 now, so that would have been when I was 15. Um, a bit later, yeah. No, maybe actually. Maybe we were right there, actually. I was thinking it a bit later. But no, actually, it could have been, yeah, it would have been about 25, 25 plus years, actually. Yeah, we did that. So that was... I think that was the rise of when security cameras were going into the stores and stuff like that. It was like the big, the big thing to happen. Yeah, it 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 just. Um, I mean, it, it could well have been true, but it, it makes me think: how was he? How was he got that? Maybe he knew some of these people beforehand. I mean, I just don't see him knocking on the door and being I given that. Can't see that. You, you don't knock. You don't knock on prison doors. You just don't. No. You'd have to. Uh, I don't care if it's the. You know year 2020 or the 1980 they just don't knock prison doors you'd have to go in some way or get some someone to know someone or something to happen because the governor doesn't yeah. come to the door either because even it's if he did knock on the door they're not going to say you know what do. our governor's here have a word with him You'll, it'll be by appointment right it'll yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's uh, the way it yeah. for leads isn't it it's not much of a lead in the company where it's been some sort of inquiry by the prison out of prison service Mm. It's not usually by somebody not like so you don't knock on a door of any kind of organization like the prison service. No. No. Um it, it just very fishy. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. So that must have been uh, then yeah. you say the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have been the the nineties, yeah, most likely. So um the other thing is um he he, he says that he moved a lot of money around um for the elite on private mm. planes. Um and you know you had said that you um had been on planes with him were they private planes no i can't remember emirates being a private plane or emirates. Air Tur turkish air turkish being via istanbul um <laughs> no it was not private in fact on the way to dubai from malaga you have to do a six hour stop in istanbul so you have to take first class so you can get into Turkish Air's VIP area, but that's all right. <laughs> if not, it's a terrible airport. It used to be. They've actually done it up now, but no private jets were Charlie taken. So yeah, no. Sorry about that. So no, yeah, no private, no private jets. Um, then just to be clear, you you'd been on what maybe a couple of flights with him, and they were sort of Turkish Air oh, public. Probably been about 20, 30 flights with him. Yeah, Turkish Air Emirates oh, into Madrid. Yeah, 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 quite a few. I think I've been to Dubai oh, too many times. But not one of them was private. All of them were public planes. Mm. I'm guessing nor normal normal class seating. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, no. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you laugh at this. I got stuck in economy while you took business. <laughs> so he actually stuck me back in economy while he took business. Yeah, a couple That's of times. Oh, really? Yeah. So you went, you went back to economy and he was flying business? Oh, my okay. God, yeah. yeah. Yeah, on a few occasions. Yeah. And there's one occasion which we'll go into another time actually where he sent me back with his pgp which is an uh, encrypted phone and i didn't know what nothing about it and um he owed some money in the in the six figures um to some some kind of mafia people and left me to pick up the pieces which i was getting death threats for and pictures of my family for but I'll go into that another time and and the way he handled it as well, because that's one of the biggest things he's done to me and why I really can despise that guy. He's well, this is, this is, um, yeah, yeah. I don't want you to get angry. I mean, I've, I've, I've have had people speak to me about some of his dealings. He has actually been, he has actually dealt with, um, certain, I'm not going to say kind of who, but he has dealt with dangerous people. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and dealt with money with yeah. with some dangerous people mm. and I, I do know about this but i don't want to talk about them um on air but um, no. yeah to say that you were left to pick up yeah when i've got a one-year-old baby or a, or a six-month-old baby at a time and a wife at home and I'm getting pictures of them the pictures of my car pictures of my house you know so we've had to go into a hotel into hiding and he's come back from dubai to you know should be going back 
and being a man and sorting the issue out and sorting the problem out. But no, he gets near and Justin it's off to two weeks into England to go to a couple of weddings. And then I'm getting all the I'm get, I'm stuck with my family shitting ourselves while he's him and his missus are fucking posting shit on uh, on social media and uh, in suits and you know having the best times of their freaking lives. So wow. yeah, I'm that's sorry you went through that. And he is. That's, yeah, that's, um, that's bad. Um, no, not fucking bad. It's the most disgusting thing a person could do. Let them to their son as well. That's yeah. why I hate him with an absolute passion how old would you have been at, at, at the time around 20 we're, talk, we're not talking we're talking about four or five years ago oh really yeah no. we're talking recently no. um my yes. yeah 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 well um four, three I, years, four years ago you yeah. know, I mean, this, this is where it all came to a head with me and him mm. this is where you fell out big time no that weren't that that was kind of midsummer. it was christmas he um we were having a we we, had, we were having a little bit of a joke back and forth on whatsapp and i said you know it's um i said to him about something about uh, it was it was just a joke it, you know just private joke between me and him and i said uh, it was like a woman joke or something i can't even remember what it was it was not nothing major and he just from from one joke to another one just stopped bomb and he had to go at me about being womanizing and all this kind of stuff. I was like, what the fuck are you on about? Where, where was all this come from? Anyway, and he's, his, his jokes about women are horrendous. Like, me and my sister cringe like shit when he's online. Like, we just like, don't, uh, like, shit, don't. Um, <clears throat> and then about two days later, he says something about women on his fucking feed. And I'm like... There's a lot of sexist comments from me about Charlie. Him. Said, and racist you? ones too. Oh yeah, very. He's a huge racist. He's he's a proper racist, a f disgusting twat. Um, he used to say uh, the p word quite a lot in his earlier. Oh, oh, the n word as well. I mean, oh I mean, really? I die. I literally die inside when he does that. It's yeah. Disgusting. Um, it <clears throat> yeah, but he 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 basically. Yeah, he he uh, he doesn't care. He just he's just the way he is. No one's ever going to change him as well. By the way, if anyone thinks they will, it's just. No. Um, but it's we can maybe change. We, we can maybe change the minds of people that are putting their oh, heart, soul, emotions, people. everything, money into him. Um, just and his, last time, guys, just have a look at the, what he's saying, and really, does it make sense? You know, have a little bit of do, do, do your own due diligence behind this. Yeah. Does it stack up? Have a look at some of his past claims and see whether they actually came true. Did mm. they? No, most of them didn't. So, you know, it's it's a it's kind of. It's absolutely i mean he exposes himself for his own lying and and guys if you haven't watched yet 30 reasons why i don't trust charlie ward watch it because um i will show you a little bit of a snippet of of, of some of the stuff he said that didn't come true later in this interview um but that is a place to start uh, and there I, I literally just show him talking and i literally show the things he talked about not coming true uh in, yeah. in a lot of it um it's, it's, so just, yeah go on he believes oh, himself. Yeah, no, I, he genuinely believes himself. Um, I think you're right. Lie after lie, after lie after lie, and he just literally covers it up with another one and another one and another one. I think he rehearses it in his brain before he goes to bed. I don't know. <clears throat> but I, th I think he does believe himself. I think you're right. Oh, I think he, he convinces himself of mm -hmm. what he's saying, and then he lives that lie. It's like um, uh, creating a false reality and then living yeah. in that. Uh, and and you know, it. it's, it's easy to believe, you know. You can make other people believe it if you believe it. If you don't believe it, no one else is going to believe the words that comes out of your mouth. Basically. It's some great it's imagination, it. though. It's some his imagination. Yeah. Yeah. The stories he comes out with are so crazy and out of this world. That it's I'm like sometimes I sit there and like when he's talking about when he used to go to Africa and to these Nigerians and getting all this U.S. stamp dollars over in America, you know. In you know, I, I was like, I said it on the last interview, I was talking to Darren. I swear to God, he gets these emails from these Nigerians, and he's like, going, Do you know what? Oh, yeah, I, I know him. And he's probably responds, he's the only one that responds to them. I genuinely <laughs> think he's doing that because he's never gone over there and come back with a successful deal. I don't know, oh, he talks an absolute load of crap, but he goes over there, gets stuck over there because he's got no money to get back because he's relying on this big deal to happen, and they never fucking did. And honestly, I'm like, why are you going to Africa 
for these million dollar deals and no one can even afford to put you on a flight or in a hotel and it's just like you're dealing with mugs you, you yeah. Con this. men. yeah con man being it being conned by con men and i think, and I think that there is very much like the there a couple of Everyone. times um, let's just quickly show this video to illustrate this. And not only um, was he saying that he was moving money around for the elite, for politicians, for people with mm -hmm. high wealth, um, but he was also saying, um, so there was an article uh, that came out um, when uh, his son, your brother, um, passed away. And in that article, it said that he was an oil tycoon. And he yeah. cleared that up with me, he I, cleared I, that up with me in an interview. My dad um, sold them stories to the sun, to the mirror, I personally, I personally believe that they were sold to them, and other but, members of my family do because the way they're written. If you yeah. read it, the way they're written, it's written by him. It's said yeah. by him. That's no, he, not, he wasn't an oil tycoon. He never had anything to do with oil. It's one of those things that he's said somewhere. So I think you're probably right that he sold those stories mm -hmm. to the papers, the and then later down the line. Him saying he was an oil tycoon has come back to bite him when someone like me has come on an interview and asked him about it, and and he's he's backtracked and and I think maybe the same with the top of the pops thing which we'll talk about in a bit. But let's show this yeah, video and we'll talk more about it. Oh god, that's embarrassing. Don't, <laughs> let's have a look at this one. I don't want to be associated with that guy with that kind of stuff. <laughs> let's do one step at a time. Let, let's check this one out. Money around for the elite. Charlie states that he was involved in moving large amounts of money around for the elite people in positions of power and government officials. This instantly rang my alarm bells, and it should do yours. I've worked behind the scenes with government now for at least 15 years, at least 15 years, moving currency around the world. And so I've been doing that for a number of years. I've always been Between honest, the right? super rich and governments. And you tend to find that they're both interlinked. And that's, I don't know, 20 years ago, I suppose. <clears throat> sure. Um, and it, it started like that where people needed money. Nowadays, oh, you know, the world is, if it's cash, it's got to be dirty. And what people don't realise is, is that, that, yeah, there's a lot of dirty cash out there. Of course there is. But there's an awful lot of clean cash out there. I've been moving money around the world for a number of private clients. Wow, Charlie. Are people serious? Number five. Charlie brokered oil deals. Back in 2009... The Daily Mail reported on Charlie Ward's son's death. In that article, they described Charlie as an oil tycoon. Now, Charlie denied this and he'd said in videos that he didn't know where that had come from. Now, when I interviewed him, he said that he wasn't an oil tycoon. Uh, he said he didn't know where that came from, but he'd brokered oil deals. And then he seemed startled when I showed him his LinkedIn account, which I'd researched, that uh, said that he'd spent eight years in the oil and gas business. It was reported in the newspapers. And it had said that you were um, an oil tycoon. No, no. Okay. Um, I, I've done oil deals mm. um, because I work at my offices in Dubai. Mm. Um, and it has been for the last 12 years. I've done a number of oil transactions. Okay, that doesn't make me a tycoon. I don't know where that came from. You, you yeah, fixed a couple of oil deals. You bought a few. Brokered. Brokered would, a few deals. Yeah, but you wouldn't say that you, you, know, you were in the no. oil business. No. Um, in here, though, on your in your LinkedIn, you know, it says that you were eight years in the oil and gas. In yeah, this, this is brokering deals. This is this doesn't make you a tycoon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I said before, I mean, if he did, I mean, I, I didn't even think that maybe he had sold that story to the papers himself. I, I thought it was fishy. And when, uh, yeah, so when I caught him in that talking to him about it, and I was trying to get him to kind of say no which he did I, I don't know where that came from i don't know where that came from and then i'm just like boom there's your linkedin account and it says that you're in the oil and gas industry oh well brokering brokering deals uh, you don't yeah. put that in your linkedin account if you're not you've you just know. done it on the odds odds and bods no you don't yeah. um so to clarify you think that um you know wh why do you think that he sold that himself that, that story to the papers there's a lot going on at that time obviously in my head and everyone else's, but um, <clears throat> he, um, when we challenged it, well, I was going to go to the papers and take tell, you know, take this fucking shit down, you know, talking about my oil tycoon son. First of all, my brother was a self-made man. It had nothing to do with my dad. My dad ain't a no toy oil tycoon. He made his own money. That's why he had that car. 
that's why he did what he did. Um, yeah. Now, I, and people start to think that, oh, it's just some rich kid's son that, you know, got a car and fucking went over a cliff. No, it's not at all that. Uh, there's more to that story. And when I was going to challenge it, he was saying, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. He was really adamant not for us to contact them. Now, we didn't at the time because our heads were up our asses, basically. And I just thought, you know, what, fuck, yeah, just leave it. And then, obviously, as time's gone by, I've read it back. I've read the papers. You know, I have been, I do see all that stuff. Me and my brother were very, very, very close, you see. So, and then I just look at it and I just depict this information. It just, it just screams him. Screams him mm. all over. It just does. It's Brad almost a... It's all about me, 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 me. Exactly. It was almost like an advertisement for himself. Me, 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 me. Yeah, that's all it is. An oil tycoon. This, yeah. that, and the other. Like, hang it's on a minute. Fucking... It's about blow smoke up my own fucking ass. Like, seriously. Mm. Absolutely. Ugh. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, um. It's interesting. Um. That and and now when when you said that in the last interview, I thought well, that makes sense. What, why would why would these papers suddenly pluck out of nowhere? Oh, he's an oil tycoon. No disrespect. Me and my brother were just two guys in Port of Benus. You know, we'd done quite well at work. You know, we had a, we had a few good... We, we weren't anybody to write a fucking you know, a story about. Yeah, he had a car crash. Yes, it was quite horrific, but it wasn't going to be UK paper stuff, mm -hmm. is it? It's not. When someone had to go to them and give that information... Our ages, our, you know, all that kind of, the papers won't go, oh, look, there's a crash, let's go and cover it. I don't don't think so. This is, uh, you know, I've thought about this a million times, maybe over thought it, but I do think 100% from me and, and other man, family members think it was him as well. Hmm. And it's not just me. Yeah, I, yeah, very, very interesting, and it kind of it just clicked when you said that. It made sense to me that that's mm. that's why it came out like that. And then Charlie when, again. And, and then, then later when when questioned about it, it it no longer because he was being questioned, he was like, oh well, crap, I'm they're not they're gonna find, I'm not an oil tycoon, you know. No, I just brokered some deals. I knew some people brokered some deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was kind of backtracking, which he's done a lot of. And I've made videos on this. Guys, go and check out Charlie Ward back Backtracks um, for a start on my channel. Um, so, okay. We so talked about that. Go on. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, sorry. We've talked about that. You know, I've got so many points to cover. And, you know, I want to make sure that you have your chance to speak, but I want to make sure that we get through these points and we don't dwell on certain matters. Um, but I think that that's, that's the important thing. With that, you know, that's the only thing that makes sense to me, that he sold that story to the papers. Yeah. yeah. Listen, going, yeah. Back, go, going back to private planes, uh, you've already explained. Charlie's saying he was on private planes. He was saying that you were on some of them with him. Um, recently, after you've done your interview, um, a lot of people in his insiders club, um, are you aware that there's this insiders club where people can play 11? Okay, so that, so Charlie closed down his own YouTube channel. He said that he was going to be closed down soon. He was saying it in the interview with me at the beginning. Um, he's, he'd been saying it for about a month. I've already had a strike. They're going to censor me soon. They're closing down my YouTube channel. So we've now made a new website, the drcharlieward.com. If you go on there and you can join our, our insiders club for 11 euros per month, or 99 euros per year, and you will get inside information for being a part of that insiders club. And uh, once a week on a Saturday, I believe, I will do a, a Zoom call with all of you and answer your questions, which he doesn't. He yeah, comes on this name to Reverend, yeah, Reverend Charlie Wolf. <laughs> like, do on a Sunday morning or something. Um, I'm, I'm amazed he hasn't put a PhD at the end of his name or anything yet. But you know, anyway, um, this this is making it laugh because he actually had a thing at one point. I think he had what? at one point. I think somewhere. I, you know, I, but when you said it, then he not a PhD, but he had some letters after his name somewhere. <laughs> so Some it's like C U N. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so move, yeah, moving on to the, the private planes. I was, as I was saying, oh, so we went on to the insiders club. So I, I didn't know that you weren't aware of that. That is how he's he's getting a lot of money off of vulnerable people. He's um, funneled 
his following uh, as YouTube were censoring him into his own website where he lies about how many followers he's got. And we've, we've checked that. Um, people that um, no, do. I had a look at it the other day. 13 million or something. 13 million and 17. Uh, number 17. Oh, 17. Oh, yeah. It relates to the letter, you know. And yeah. so th these are being these numbers are being input by the people that deal with his website, the, the source code. And we know this because it will go two weeks on the same number. But not only that, we've gone into the source code and we've we've seen that is an input value. That so people like are going on there and go, you know what, how much how many followers today? Uh 13 million and 17. There you go, nice one. It's a cheap website, it's not a nice website. Um I looked at it the other day, someone asked about it. So I just thought we'll have a look and I just saw it and I was like, oh wow. Like I would go back and ask for a redesign. <laughs> it looks so, cheap. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been on there, I've checked it out, but you know, um he has this insiders club, like I say, once every Saturday. And after your interview, guys, um people were obviously it, the, the the press was hot in his insiders club. What's going on with Charlie Ward's son? What's going on with this? What's going on with that? Um, and then we got this. Can you see that, guys? Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So uh, this is Charlie Ward Insiders Club. Um, this is his Telegram group for his entire Oh, group. yeah. I heard he's got Telegram. So, so look at his thing. Yeah. So, uh, what, you know, again, like any of his other platforms, 1,214 members. Yeah, that relates to 13 million followers. Hmm. Mm. Um, you know, I believe he's got 50,000 to 100,000 actual subscribers, which is still a lot of people, but it's not 13 million. Mm. So this this is his uh, actual official um, Telegram group. And someone asked just before this message, what's going on with, with Charlie Ward's son uh, and that interview? And so this person uh, had said, he explained it on Saturday, Insiders Club. Punchline, he signed an NDA when he was moving money on airplanes. He had his son go with him on these private airplanes, apparently. Uh, he had his son go with him because of the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement. He was not allowed to talk about his work to his son. He didn't. Now someone has interviewed his son to try and discredit Charlie. A low blow from the deep state. <laughs> a low blow from the deep state. Ah, oh, bless him. They actually believe his shit. They, they really uh, do. Was a, they I do. think I was a, described as a pedo protector, wasn't I? After um, yeah. you were, I was. Anyone that questions <laughs> these guys are, um, you know, it's I their really go-to. They have, they have no in, they have, they have no intellectual no. arguments. So they yeah. go, you know, they're deep state. They're pedo protectors. They're this, they're that, the other. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just it, it's really, but some people go, oh right, well that makes sense. Oh, I want to believe Charlie, but most, but but people yeah, but with actual names will always use this because he's got these stories. So oh, I can't because it's MI five, or I can't because it's non disclosures, I can't because of this, and I can't because of that, and I can't because of this. You're like, fuck, you know, where does this end? When can you know you've got a talk show, yeah, and you're talking, you're giving people inside information that you can't fucking talk about. All of a sudden, now you can't talk about it. It's a get out of jail But then he it's does, and then he makes excuses when it doesn't happen, doesn't come true. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, mm -hmm. but I can't tell you, NDAs. And we had to change the narrative. And he's even said that the deep state watch his program to find out what's going on with the White Hats. So he's even saying that his show, he has to throw people off because but the bad people are watching. I don't know what any of it is, <laughs> to be honest. I haven't got a clue what all this stuff is, to be fair. Um what, what I'm saying is he's saying the bad people are watching his show, so he mm. has to get things wrong sometimes. Right? Oh, right. So he's tricking them. Yeah. Oh, he's he's them off. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And people believe it. It's, oh, really? it's shocking. It's so I, shocking. I kind of half want to give them all a cuddle. Like, I do. It's gonna be okay. and, then a slap, and then another cuddle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But but we're, we're doing what we can, you know. And I was joking about the slap, but we're doing what we, we're doing what we can, and, yeah. and that that is that is trying to spread this. So this interview will help a lot of people. I can tell you that. I hope so. Pe pe no, people will watch it, and people watch the last one. People watch my other work. People, even more people, I reckon, will watch this one. And when they see it, and 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 sometimes it, it it's kind of hard. But the, the more humorous points, us laughing about that, is sometimes the kick up the arse that people need. To go, you know what? That is actually ridiculous. I, you know, what, what have I been, 
You know, what have I been yeah, thinking? Please. Wake up, guys. Like, seriously, dude, honestly, before you spend another 11 euros or 99 dollars, whatever it is, do your fucking thing. You know, the it, it, amount of sure. hour it takes to make that money, just go and do something to, to productive to show yourselves that this is absolute garbage. Well, uh, hopefully uh, watching this show will be a good investment of their time. Um, saying about the private planes, this moving the money around and the private planes, this is where Charlie Ward. So he started off his YouTube. Uh, he was doing walks. I don't know if you uh, know about this. His early stuff. He was doing a walk uh, yeah. to lose weight or whatnot. And he was just on his phone, you know, and he was talking about this, that and the other. Um, and that's how he started getting a following. And one of the first claims that he made was, oh, yeah, back when I was on these private jets and I was moving money around, um, I spoke to one guy. And at the time, I didn't really pay any attention because it's just conversation. But I remembered um, when this coronavirus started, I remembered them saying, we're going to crash the economy. Oh, and, he, and then Charlie was like, oh, yeah, how are you going to do that then? It was like, you just watch and see. And then after the um, sort of the pandemic started, he then had contact again with this person from however long ago that had said this on the private plane. And he said, well, we're ready now, ready to crash the economy. You just watch. And, and, and this is where he gained his popularity. People go, oh, he has inside information. I mean, this regarding... parties with all the Rothschilds and uh, yeah. the Rockefellers and stuff, does he? Disregarding <laughs> the fact that this has obviously come from someone, if this is true then he's in bed with people that are making these these lies, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah that, that to start with. But, yeah, he said he's going to crash the economy, that, that, that they're going to crash the economy, and, and he knew about this. <laughs> and this was his. This is where all this secret intel starts from, Glenn. Okay, right? so that's, yeah. So. I, it's mad. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I mean, I was just shocked with listening to half of this half the time. I just can't believe that yeah, i've heard about this kind of stuff on you know people buying into these conspiracy theories flat wellness and you know all that kind of stuff flat earthers whatever they're called all that kind of stuff but <clears throat> to actually see this now that a member of my so-called family are uh, is actually telling people this and people are actually paying him money when he has nothing to back it up with it's absolutely incredible I mean, he has nothing. He has no evidence, and he's never provided any evidence. However, people believe that he has insider intel, and these insiders are working for Trump, right, and the Trump team. And this is where the QAnon thing plays into it. But yeah, moving on. Yeah. So, crash the economy. We said about that. I just want to quickly go into timeshare sales. He said that he, um, you know, he said on my show. In fact, I didn't get a clip for it, but uh, on my show and others, he said that he spent a lot of his life in timeshare sales. I think in Thirty Reasons, I say something like, I'm "Not saying that every to a timeshare salesman is a con man, but no. I thought it was worthy of uh, letting you know <laughs> his years in timeshare sales." <clears throat> and he says he spends. Uh, he spent most of his life in really um, hotel business. He says he's, he's over there, you know, because when he was actually moved to Spain about early 80s or whatever it was, <clears throat> um, no, it had been um, about 90s. 90s. Yeah, I moved there in 97, 98. So he was there a bit before that. Now, no, yes, yeah, so when we were kids as well, he was out in Spain <clears throat> selling timeshare, which he wasn't because he actually had no job because I know he didn't have a job because he declared to my mum that he had no money to pay for um, child maintenance. So he would send her a check for one pence per child per week. And that was the, that was all he could afford. So, and my mum, obviously back then you could, it cost like 20 quid to cash a check at the post office and stuff like that. You know, mama, we were brought up in council estates and flats and what have you moved from winter lets to there, to there, to there while he's swanning it around Marbella, um, being the big salesman of the year. Um, <clears throat> which, you know, again, this is something he'll have to backtrack on. Maybe um, keep an eye on that video because <clears throat> that will happen. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... It, and uh, he went to prison for non-payment of maintenance as well. Yes, so he did go to prison twice. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. What, 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 were the, what were the two things he went to prison for? Don't know the second one, but I know one of them was non-payment of maintenance. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So not looking after his children as he should do, as yeah. any father um, should uh, do, um, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, going to prison for that. I mean, that's a big thing. I mean, come on, yeah. it can't cost that much money to not go to prison. Like you idiot, you know, just yeah. like look after your children. But the, the second one, basically. apparently he <clears throat> he said was to do with um, fraud. Uh, big, uh, you know, I think Darren, didn't you? Didn't you mention this in the last interview? I think you remember him saying something about printing money. Oh, or something. Printing. Yeah, it was credit card fraud and counterfeit money. It was it. Yeah, I yeah. think counterfeit money that he'd learn whilst he was yeah. in prison. <clears throat> I don't know how that is, whether that's true or that's just him talking absolute bollocks again. But you never know. You never know. <laughs> They could be well, he's talking absolute bollocks, or he's a dodgy geezer. Uh, it's always the same, and either yeah. one of those paths um, could be Charlie because he's just Charlie. But um, yeah, so did you work with him at some point, like as an apprentice? Like, I mean, did he have a trade or, or anything at any point? No, I've never worked for him. I've no, never he... worked for him directly. I've just don't know. As I was mentioned in the last video, you said to me, oh, "Okay, we're going to head off to Dubai. Da -da -da -da. We're going to do this, this." Kind of like, you know, if he's got the paperwork to say that, I'm jumping on a plane for free. I'm going to go sit in Dubai for a couple of days, faff around, go do some shopping for the missus or whatever else, and, uh, yeah, just get some bits and pieces done. You know, why not? So, so he I never had a trade? He wasn't like an electrician or anything like that? Sorry? He wasn't like an electrician or anything like that? He never had a trade? He had a trade as an electrician. He is a oh, he did. electrician. This is probably the only um thing that he does have he is a qualified electrician when he left uh, yeah when he left school or whatever he went to college he did whatever he did but that back then he got he was a qualified electrician i will just give him that but he ain't a doctor he never <laughs> yeah. well, we'll get into that so he <laughs> so this is pre um sensomatic days he was yeah. a qualified electrician okay it's something he never talks about, though. I never mentions in any of his videos. It's one part of his life that he doesn't talk about. What? What do you not mention? Being, Being an electrician. I'm like, like, why would you? It's like it's a switch no. no, He, 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 he only flies private jets. He yeah, won't talk about down. certain things. Mm -hmm. It's a small detail. Mm -hmm. he, he won't go to my sister's football matches in the rain down at Newquay, but he'll go to the FA Cup final at Wembley. You know, he only does these certain events, which, you know, gives him that egotistical you know smoke up his ass um that's all he does that's all he wants it's something big 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 me 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 no it won't do anything small don't take economy which he does but um you know it's just what he is it is it is um always uh, about charlie he's just charlie he's not the messiah mm -hmm. but it's always about charlie and you know when he started his youtube channel when he was only getting a hundred or so views that any youtuber anyone with a platform um or anyone with any knowledge or common sense will find this weird. When Charlie first started his channel, apart from you know, he was doing the walks and talking to his phone, and then, you know, as he'd started, he was only getting 100 to 1,000 views. Um, suddenly he was uh, sponsored by a, uh, a major um, vodka brand. Uh, let's have a look at that. Back in early 2020, when Charlie Ward started his YouTube channel, he was only getting a few hundred views. However, he seemed to be sponsored by Nero Vodka from the offset. I find it shady that a brand new YouTuber would be sponsored by a large vodka distributor. I'm being sponsored by Nero Premium <laughs> Vodka. What more can I say? So, um, I found that really weird because you know, maybe one the owner. I know the owner is of Nero Vodka. Oh, you he, know the owner? Yeah. And I know who he is and what he's about as well. So I'm not going to really talk about him either. So, um, so <laughs> respect. Okay. My... Yeah. So there you There's... go. Do dodgy red flags. Um, and we'll, we'll say no more. And yeah. happens to be sponsored because obviously he knows the owner. You know the owner. And yeah, that's, it. that's all it yeah. is. But the owner yeah. has actually, I, from what I've heard from somebody else, has pulled away from my dad because of the amount of crap that he talks and he didn't want to be associated with it anymore. Is that why they stopped um, sponsoring him? I believe so. That's only yeah. what I've heard. Yeah, well, the, yeah. I mean, it, it did but stop way before I reported on it, but it was something that was uh, definitely very, very dodgy. Okay, let's move on to the, the doctor fraud. Uh, let's have a look at it's that. fraud. In his 20s, Charlie states that he ticked the wrong box in his driving licence. He ticked the doctor box. He states that he used this to get out of parking fines. 
Charlie would then go on for nearly the next 40 years using the title Doctor in everything from his YouTube channel to official documents to even registering companies in his name. Charlie only then revealed that he wasn't a doctor after receiving pressure from his viewers to reveal what his non-existent doctorate was in. I can categorically say as well that I've never ever changed my name from the day I was born. Sure. Not even to doctor. Oh, no, I, that, 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 <laughs> you know the story with that. That was when I was, I think I was about 20 or 22, I mean 40 years ago. And my licence came through and I just ticked the doctor box. Yeah. And it came back Dr Charles Henry Ward. Listen. And I used it once against a parking ticket, and it came back. The, the parking ticket was thrown out because I was on call, and it was just me being cheeky in my twenties. I'm sixty now. Yeah. So it stayed there all my life. Having said that, I've actually done an online degree in psychology. No. Oh, but it's very interesting that um, people who've been to university don't tend to respect if you've done an online degree as a real degree. Um, you, you mentioned this uh, briefly in the last um, interview. So he, he had um, he had said that he'd ticked doctor <laughs> on his driving license to get to scam free parking. You could back back until about five years ago through deed poll, you could change your name to doctor, to sir, to many different titles through deed poll. You could have different names like Donald Duck and stuff. Now, they have strictened up on this a lot. I don't remember, like, um, there's that big brother and they changed some people's names in there, didn't they, through Deep Hole? Um, something stupid. But anyway, so you could do that back then. And I think that's yes, what we did. Uh, it only cost, like, 30 quid to do it. It's a once-off thing. It's done and dusted. Um, and that's what I believe he did. But now you can't do that. You can only get Mr. Mrs. You can change the doctor, but you have to send in a doctorate to show a certificate to show that you uh, are actually entitled to that 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 title. Um, other than that, yeah, that's it, really. That's I think that's all he did. I don't think ticking a box. You know, is he is he literally saying the DVNA for a bunch of idiots? Like, yes. like <laughs> that's all he's saying there. Yeah. Like, Back in the 80s, it was easy, and he managed to get free parking from it. In some videos, he said, oh, I found out afterwards. He's basically free saying he's, other he's videos, he says, I did it to get free parking, right? It's but then he says that he got this... lying about stuff, and then lying again, he's yeah. actually openly admitting it to everyone, and everyone's going, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, he's contradicting himself. Yeah. And then he's saying that he did an online course and got that, you know, that certificate. Yeah, well, that certificate, I want to get... Can anyone get a close-up on that certificate? Because that name, if you Google it, it just says it's um, it just says it's a bag of shit, really. Oh, oh, the it, university? It, yeah, the university. It's called Bath... I don't know, I can't remember. But me and my sister looked at it, and as I mentioned in the last video, he got that on my first birthday. Like, it's dated 1982, 9th of August 1982. So it's like... And I said to him, do you remember getting this? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, what, what, was it a special day? He's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, it was my birthday, wasn't it? <laughs> my first birthday. Your own son. And he didn't remember that. No. He just remembers so, getting this fake certificate. So he got it like 40 years ago, nearly. Um, 39. Uh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. 30, 36 and a bit years ago, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he did it. He did it a long time ago, you know. My mum was obviously pregnant, coming out pregnant with my sister. I was one. My brother was two, three years old. You know, my dad's just going around doing his doctorates, you know, as you do. Um, yeah, yeah it, was all, it all adds up to be absolutely true, you know. I'm sure that's what, how it goes, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's a... Uh, no, because yeah. I think he was just running around doing electrician stuff. Because isn't that the time when he was actually still or about to fix... The Indian's cooker. Right. Because that's yeah. after that. You know, so he's a doctor, but yet he was still fixing Indian's cookers. How yeah. You know? I mean, it makes it absolute works. sense. Uh, yeah, when when you've got your. On 50 grand a year. Oh, why well, not go <laughs> fix someone's fucking cooker at 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> but who will likely get you kicked out of the place that. Oh, yeah. And it goes stopped. completely against all the rules. Of the, the religion that your whole entire family are in. That makes 
perfect sense. I see what happened. Guys, you're well. Keep following him, man. He's honest. <laughs> he makes so much sense there as he does with any of his other claims. Oh, yeah. Now, look, I know you're pressed for time, so I want to try and fit at least one more conversation in if that's possible. Um, so let's have a look at this. That you know, I, I saw in your last interview, you weren't really well, you were quite surprised to hear about this uh, oh, the so fake king scenario. And this is what made his YouTube blow up. I mean, this is what made him famous. He later, after because that this was the thing that I was looking into about this guy not being mine, yours, and Darren's king and everyone else's, you know, um, to, for someone to, to claim that and to claim they're going to take the throne and have power over us was a big deal to me. Not only that, taking money off people um, when I, I smelt something fishy was a big deal to me. This is what made Charlie Ward famous. And after people like myself and Justice and others going into the fact that this guy was not being truthful and his ancestry was not what he said he was. And we talked to his family. Uh, we talked to Greg Hallett's family and things. And we found out that he was lying. Greg, uh, sorry, Charlie then had to admit Oh, I've known all along. I've known all along it was a lie, but just have a look at this video. A fake king. The apparent King John III. Now, this is a big one. Charlie's big breakthrough came from promoting a fake king, Greg Hallett, who was stating that he was the rightful king of England, as well as holding the title Christ. On doing this, Charlie went from hundreds to a few thousand followers to tens of thousands of followers. He later stated that he was on the fence around this whole situation. However, this is simply not true. We have the absolute pleasure to be joined today uh, with, with Greg Hallett, the real king of England. He has a bunch of titles. Has a bunch of titles and fulfills all the predictions. God save Donald Trump. God save our children. And God save King John III. Charlie later stated that he'd known the truth all along from the beginning, that Greg Hallett wasn't the rightful bloodline to be king. This threw a spanner in the works to this whole narrative and should be a major red flag for anyone listening to him. And Greg Hallett was getting signs coming to him and the signs weren't coming to the other guy. So they basically agreed to switch roles. So that Greg assumed the role that he was going to be King John III and the other guy was going to be the Crown Prince. They agreed. And then they fell out. And that's why all the books of those histories have been destroyed. And I knew that information right from the start. But I just thought, I'm going to give you the airtime and see if you actually tell everybody what, what has happened. And he's chosen at this stage not to do so. If he chooses to tell everybody that, then I think it would do an awful lot of good. Dave Mahoney knows the truth. Lee Dawson knows the truth. Jack Kidd knows the truth. Um, I'm not going to force him to tell the truth. At one point you set up a fundraiser for the King. I did right at the very start. David Mahoney is an actor that's been in some B-list movies. He also produced and hosted the Hidden King documentary. This promoted the now debunked con man king, uh, Greg Hallett. Now, if you thought that his connection to David Mahoney was dodgy, you should look into this guy, Jack Kidd. Jack Kidd is a semi-famous uh, polo player and brother of uh, semi-famous uh, Jody Kidd. He's yeah. also the brother of Gemma Kidd, who owns a makeup company whose director is none other than Ghislaine Maxwell. Jack Kidd was also the guy that got Charlie Ward and David Mahoney involved with the fake King Greg Hallett. Jack, Jack Kidd's your friend, and uh, he um, he was yeah. the guy that, that kind of found Greg, put, put, That's right. put you onto him. <laughs> he doesn't look uh, So you've known him, I'm guessing you've known him a number of years. A number of years, yeah. yeah. He was on the company, he was on the same company which Gemma had. Yeah, that's right. He's his put, name was back onto there as a director, and I think Jelaine Maxwell was on there as well. Also on there, uh, a shareholder, Lord Rothschild, which is quite interesting. Um, do, do you know anything about his connection to uh, Rothschild? Well, I know you know that the families are the Shan kids, they're part of the British royal family. Sorry, say that again. The kid family are linked to the royal family, royal family. and kids, aren't they? Jack was very, very closely linked because of the bolo as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm guessing that's what that photo is from, Polo. Yeah, it is. And Gemma is ma was married to one of the dukes or the count count of somebody. Else. So, sure. um, I've got a couple of questions to ask. There, one you said in the last interview, you didn't know nothing about this fake king. I didn't stuff. know. I still don't know nothing about it. I don't, I don't, but these kids, yeah, the Jody kid and okay. the, kid, the Jack kid. I don't know yeah. who Jack kid was, but I do know. My, when we went to Barbados about five years ago, whenever he got married, um, he, we he was staying at the kids' property. The kids' property, yeah. And we were staying at the one adjacent. And we rented about seven massive mansions over there. Uh, yeah. Villas, not mansions. Um, and one of them was owned by Jodie Kidd's mother. Um, don't know her name. Um, yeah. Jack Kidd's mum as well. Jack Kidd's mum, Who yeah. is friends with um, Harley Ward. I don't know... I don't know how they got to know each other. I don't know whether he got to know her because he rented the property or whether he knew her from before, because I've never heard of them before. I know who Jody Kidd is. Obviously, I'm a man. Um, so, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah she's fit. And she's got to be fast around the Top Gear track. Um, but... And we're both, we're, both, we're both British, you know. I mean, yeah, exactly. you, the but, US and that don't know who she is. But we do. Uh, we were of that age as well. Yeah, they had a big polo... Um, whatever they call it, pitch there. Um, so I, I don't know whether he got to know them from that, and that's how it's all stemmed. Uh, because yeah, um, but that that kind of now it's all kind of adding up to a little bit to me. Um, I'll obviously do some more research on to how that all started because I know a lot well, of people are involved you, um, in, the, in the, the setting up of this. So I can I'll, tell you uh, that they were friends. And um, so Charlie had started obviously doing these pod these these podcasts about mm -hmm. um, conspiracy. Jack Kidd also was in his rich club of um, conspiracy. Uh, he had a, a group called the Squirrels or something. Um, I don't know. That basically a group of rich people rich people that come together and discuss these conspiracies. Um, but before that, they were friends. They had met. They were friends, and this is how. Um, them two being friends ended up with um, Jack offering um, his mother's place and in, in the island for Charlie's wedding. Did you go to that wedding? You did. You, you said. I did. Yeah, I did. But did you not uh, meet Jack there? No. No. Was he there? Never Jack, until you told that his name popped up then. Uh, that's Dave that's interesting. You never I've knew of him. Dave, I've heard of Dave Mahoney, but I don't know how or why. Lee Dawson, I know, because I used to live on the same estate as him. Oh, um, wow. In Marbella, and he's a fitness trainer, and I used to be a yeah. fitness trainer uh, in Marbella as well. So I know him from there, but um, and I knew, I think him, and there's Dave, Dave. Um, oh, Vickers. Huh? Dave Vickers? No, there's another Dave. Not David Mahoney, no. No, there's another day. I've, I, from what I believe, that they were both they were in with my dad at the beginning of this. I don't know for a fact, but I heard something because some because he used to run um, our space, which is a like a WeWork kind of thing in Marbella, uh, and there there was a lot of scandal behind that as well. So I was yeah, it's one. It's why I left Marbella. It's just one thing after the next. It's just oh, everyone's shoving everything up other people's asses and then taking the shit out of it. It's like it's just they're just horrible people. They don't give a two shits about anybody. And That's I bet it, you. And when I saw them guys sit, all sitting around my dad's table at his house there, yeah, I reckon they're having a right laugh, like selling them Venezuelan money for X Y Z. They're going oh, what's up, gullible all these people. I bet they're fucking laughing at their own followers. Saying how they the next, off. The next all the way to the, the bank next pennies off them, yeah. They're better they're having a right laugh at you. And I honestly do think they're having a laugh at them. That's what I can I mean, imagine my dad doing. I mean that that's awful to think about, you know, them oh, sitting no, around no. the table. I mean, I've got another clip of them all sitting around a table. I don't think it is at your dad's place. I think it is at that one there, we'll we'll Honey's baby house. place. Oh, right, okay. And they're talking about they're talking about how Pete um N Nazara Gazara. This we'll talk about next time. But they're talking about how people. Oh, uh, well, I've just got a message, and this person's had their loan forgiven. Well, hey, hey, it's about to happen, Nazara Gazara, and and I think Charlie says only the good people will get it first. And they're all laughing. They're drinking. They're all drunk. They're, you know, and mm. 
just like in this other just like in this clip that i just showed they've all got hundreds of cans of beer around the table they're all oh, yeah. like, hey, that's all they do um, hours, and uh, my bear night sort of is having a piss take having a laugh um, and they'll be, and I guarantee you'll be laughing about how they're taking so much money off these people, these poor, vulnerable people. Before we, before we go, um, because I know you need to go, and yeah, I, I, have, I, I, I have more, more to, you know, let, let, let's do another, like you, you say. Can, I, listen, I'll, I'm, I'm doing couple. another one. I, 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 I'll talk to you guys and you answer any questions. If you find any more questions, just write them down. As, uh, oh, I, I, I'm three. ready. I'm ready for the next part. Part two coming soon, guys. If you yeah. like part one, please uh, make sure you join in. But just to ask you, around this this King scenario, you didn't know anything. Uh, Darren mentioned it last time. I showed you a clip there. What were your initial thoughts um, from seeing this guy, this 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 fake king? It wasn't a fake king at the time. Last, last year, he was very popular. That's how Charlie got popular. I don't know. I don't, I don't know who this fake king is I, i've i've never heard of it until recently um i don't know the full background i don't know who the person is is it someone i should know or something or? no no you shouldn't what i'm trying to say is 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 a year ago he was extremely popular not as popular oh, yeah. as no, he, he's is. basically done something it's gone viral and now he's he's big something or another well um, well he had me and a few others absolutely debunking the, the crap out of him and then yeah. i then looked at the people promoting him which is how i ended up looking at this is the Ward, yes, I wanted to know Mahoney, I is actually kid. funding all this shit who had got it all off the start because i know my dad is is very scatty when it comes to finances he wants me to get some money in and he's down nicky beach whacking it out spending it paying for everyone thinking he's like the absolute don kahunas and then you know then he's broke again he can't he can't sort of level himself so there's got to be someone behind this functioning all this has to be absolutely and jack kids ties to the royal family and um and, and other things um is um you know is one thing to think about and also david mahoney is tied into property scams he's a property salesman uh just like charlie was timeshare salesman very good friends all, all around the same area all good friends all pushing conspiracy narratives and you've got lee dawson as well best friends with david mahoney who's also in on that a dodgy character they I didn't think Lee was a dodgy character, but then, well, yeah, why don't you Google over. him and see what he's see what he's I selling? Don't, can't, honest, can't I don't really want to. I don't yeah, want to. I don't yeah. want to. Anyway, yeah. these these guys yeah. have all have all set, um, and not not Jack Kidd because he obviously they kind of brushed him after we were like, oh, the Glenn Maxwell um, thing. He just disappeared. Like they were like, nah, we don't need you in the spotlight anymore because they're going to be like calling fucking red flags, right? But yeah. Dave Mahoney and Lee Dawson are, and I'll show you in, in the next episode. I've got clips to show yeah. you. But Charlie says he's going to come to my doorstep with uh, with yeah. David Mahoney and Lee Dawson, who are both boxing, right? <laughs> really? so uh, first, I'm really going to have to wait for them say, to turn up to mine because I think he's taking me to court at the moment as well for using his uh, voice clip. I was taking you as well. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll see you there. We'll have, we'll have a coffee. Before we go hey, in, we'll have, a, we'll have a beer and we'll have a laugh about it. Sure, I'm sure them guys are really willing to testify in court with their fucking track record. Like, <laughs> really. honestly, um, for yeah. the viewers and for you, look forward to seeing what I've got to show you next time about that, about that yeah. specific thing. So, uh, yeah, we, we're not being taken to court. And uh, no, no. I don't believe, not only does he not know where I live, I don't even believe he knows where you live. Uh, <laughs> no, he doesn't. No. Let alone the fact that they have no legal recourse because all we're doing is showing what he's saying and saying it's bullshit, and it is bullshit. So, what are they going to sue us for? Nothing, yeah. right? So, yeah. it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, Those, thank you. yeah, thank yeah. you for coming on. It's and a, been an eye opener, a pleasure. Um, I've got more to show you, Glenn, and I, I can't about. wait to see your reaction to it. I can't. Oh, so um, we do need to do part two, like you say, maybe next week, and then see how it goes. Yeah, give us. A, you know, try, I've, I've got my son up here next week, um, so oh. I've got him next week. So put in next week, but the following the week, week after, after the seventh, seventh onwards, I'm free. I right. don't want to I tell you what. Let's try and do it as soon as possible because people are going to be really wanting to see this, and I'm really. Uh, but I am busy myself. I am busy myself. I can record so. on the seventh because I don't want to do it in front of my son. It's yeah okay all right so so next week's a no-go you're not free this week at all this week we're thursday 
Oh yeah, no. I'm um, from, from from tomorrow night. I'm with my son till Sunday the sixth at five o'clock when he goes out. I could do Sunday night. Seventh. What's the seventh? No, the sixth is Sunday. Monday's the seventh, I believe. Okay, Monday the seventh. Let's try and do that. So, guys, within the next ten days or so, we'll get out part two. Um, uh, thank you very much, Glenn, for being a good sport and sitting through no all worries. this. Um, thank you. The toilet as well. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, 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 I said to Darren, I said to, sorry, Darren and Glenn, at any point, put your hands up if you need to go to the toilet or whatever. Uh, but he's waiting for the end, so I'm going to end it up really quickly. Darren, thanks for joining us. And, guys, tune in for part two coming very soon. And, yeah, follow M Seeker of Truth. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good evening, yeah? Um, you need to grow up and be a man instead of uh, being a little millennial. It's as woke as the day is long. And uh, you've even made your sister woke as well. You know, every, every everybody else's fault except yours. When you man up and get a backbone instead of being a jellyfish, then you'll understand what's going on. And at the moment, you just don't. It's, it's sad, but that's... Uh, you'll wake up one day, and the, the longer you take to wake up to what's actually happening in the world, um, the harder it will be. And I, I'm more than willing to help you. But if you want to continue down the line that you are of just calling me a liar at every without even listening without understanding anything then you make your own decisions in life you remember he's a schoolboy um when you get caught out lying everything else falls down around you uh and it's going to be a pleasure to sit back and watch it really is attitude um you need to grow up and be a man instead of uh, being a little millennial that's as woke as the day is long and uh you've even made your sister woke as well you know every, every everybody else's fault except yours when you man up and get a backbone instead of being a jellyfish then you'll understand what's going on and at the moment you just don't it's, it's sad but that's uh you'll wake up one day and the, the longer you take to wake up to what's actually happening in the world um the harder it will be and I, I'm more than willing to help you. But if you want to continue down the line that you are of just calling me a liar at every, without even listening, without understanding anything, then you make your own decisions. In life, you remember he's a schoolboy. Um, when you get caught out lying, everything else falls down around you. Uh, and it's going to be a pleasure to sit back and watch. It really is. But there are people out there who say there's this elaborate Hollywood set where the White House, the Oval Office is in Hollywood, that Joe Biden has been, is the real Joe Biden is dead, that actors are playing him. I don't know if that does us any good at all, General. It doesn't do us any good, and it's all nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. I mean, people need to stop that. And and all the all the people that are listening to your show and, and however wide this goes, we need to stop with the nonsense and we need to 